Good afternoon, Jasper Nation, and welcome to Fast Break, where we provide you with the inside scoop on Manhattan College basketball. I'm your host, Kelsey LaCour. We're going to start off today's segment with an exclusive player profile on the Jasper's very own Rich Williams. You may know the 6'5 shooting guard as number 23, but there is much, much more to the Brooklyn native. I tell people I'm from everywhere because I'm really from everywhere. Rich Williams moved from Jamaica to Los Angeles, California at the age of two. During this time frame, he had no basketball aspirations. Basketball wasn't even a thought growing up. Um, I grew up in Los Angeles, you know, riding skateboards, riding bikes, uh, it was my favorite hobby to do. At the age of 10, Williams moved to Brooklyn, New York with his family, where he fell in love with the game. I've been in New York ever since. I, I went to middle school, high school in New York. Uh, by the time I was a senior, you know, I was looking, I had to get better grades in order to become a Division One athlete, so I ended up going to Vermont Academy. So I, I went to the academy for one year, then I ended up in Manhattan. So like I said, like, I'm from everywhere. Jamaica, Los Angeles, New York, Vermont. The move to Vermont worked in Williams' favor as he received multiple offers to play Division One basketball after attending the academy. In high school, Williams found a mentor and teammate, Ramel Brown, who ended up playing for the Jaspers from 2009 to 2013. Seeing Brown develop as a person and being a part of the Manhattan Bend basketball program inspired Williams to become a Jasper and make the same kind of improvements in his own life. One of the former players here, Ramel Brown, was my teammate in high school at Transit Tech. I remember just coming to the games, uh, still in high school as a junior, and I would see Ramel, how much he developed, not only on the basketball court, but as a person overall. And come from where we come from in Brooklyn, see that change in him was like a discipline I needed. After falling short of winning his third MAC championship in three years, Williams was determined to bring the Jaspers back to the NCAA tournament in his 2016-2017 senior season. Eight days before the Jaspers were to tip off, however, Williams received heartbreaking news that would take him off the court for the entire season. He tore his meniscus and was forced to watch his team from the sidelines. While this was a difficult time for Williams, he did learn a lot from this setback. Like I witnessed Samson Wasillo, uh, freshman on my team, you know, he came in as a freshman, he wasn't able to play for two years due to injury. So I saw how he suffered. But personally experiencing it, it hurt me so much because like something you love so much can be gone from you in an instant. Williams was back on the court feeling better than ever. And he's extremely confident that this last season will be his best. This is Tyler Wilson reporting from Dratty Gymnasium. Williams and the rest of the Jaspers strongly believe that champions are made in the offseason and are currently focusing on what they can do now in order to prevail next March. This requires having everyone on board and healthy. Some players are in the training room for injury prevention, while others are working to get back on the court after missing time this past season. Among the players who are on the journey to get healthy are redshirt sophomores A.K. Ojo and Matt Maloney. The Doc Johnson Athletic Training Room has become all too familiar to Ojo. The 6'10 center has struggled to stay healthy for most of his career as a Jasper, battling what feels like knee injury after knee injury. Once the season concluded, Ojo received arthroscopic surgery to fix a fractured bone and a torn meniscus in his right knee. A month and a half post-operation, Ojo has recently been cleared to do light strengthening and conditioning to get his mobility back. He is on track to be back on the court late summer and is determined to be 100% by the time the season begins in November. Knee problems seem to be common among collegiate athletes, but Maloney struggled with an injury that was a little more unconventional. The guard received double hip surgery, his left being done in the spring of 2016 and the right being done in the late summer. Maloney is back lifting and playing with no restrictions, but is still on the road to making a full recovery. It's no secret that this past season was nothing short of a disappointment for the Jaspers. After winning back-to-back -back titles in 2014 and 2015, they have been accustomed to the championship culture and expect nothing less from themselves. Getting back to the NCAA tournament will require them to improve in every aspect, including in the weight room. After a season that was not up to the team's expectations, head coach Steve Masiello knew that an aspect that needed to be improved was in the weight room. He looked to his head strength and conditioning coordinator, Patrick Dolan, to get the program back where it needed to be in terms of strength, agility, and mental toughness. Obviously, after last year, uh, this past season, Coach Masiello and I had to sit down right after and just kind of figure out where the whole team needed to move. And the first thing, you know, being first and foremost is kind of your environment and, and your training uh, culture. With Masiello and Dolan on the same page, this was sure to be the toughest postseason yet for the Jaspers. This standard was set, 
for the restoration of the team's lost culture being the goal. Failure isn't an option, and improvements are sure to be made on this journey back to elite status. Perfect time to So, uh, you know, these guys right now are being just put in positions of being uncomfortable, high reps, low weight, uh, very simple movements. We're only grabbing barbells right now two days out of the four days a week. Our sessions are pretty short in duration, anywhere from 25 to 40 minutes. Obviously, you're just kind of towards the end of the semester in a long season. We don't need five, six, seven days a week right now with these long training sessions. Right now, it's about a lot of restoration. Although being the biggest, strongest athletes they can be is one of the goals for this Jaspers team, a basketball season is a marathon, not a sprint. So the shorter lifts provide a challenge while not providing excessive wear and tear on their bodies. Performing at the best of their ability throughout the season is the ultimate goal. We also, to a certain degree, have to get our culture back to where it needs to be. So we're definitely asking guys to push themselves. But right now, it's not necessarily in the, the sense of strength or power. It's putting their, their bodies in either uncomfortable positions from a stretching and mobility standpoint, or maybe just, again, high reps, high sets, turning of resistance training into a, a circuit or a conditioning style almost. Definitely asking for volume, for kind of urgency, pace to pace between movements, short, sweet, get them in, get them out. The Jaspers are poised to have a potential championship year. The program is looking forward to a fresh start and some throwback mentality. Culture is key. Let's go! Reporting from Daddy Gymnasium, this is Tyler Wilson. The season did have some high notes, however, highlighted by a battle of the Bronx victory and a thrilling win over Ryder. When the team got going, incredible plays were made on both sides of the court. Of all the plays in the Jaspers' 32 games this season, we narrowed it down to the best of the best. Here are Manhattan's top seven plays of the year. At number seven, Xavier Turner with the runner from way downtown, three of his 15 points in the junior's MVP performance. At number six, Tyler Wilson with the vital block to keep first place Ryder from extending their late lead. Later that game, we have a number five play. Jaspers up one with 116 left in the game. Wilson gets the ball and dishes it to Waterman, who pump fakes, drives, hits the floater, and gets a foul. Waterman scores a career-high 35 points in the Jaspers 73-76 victory over the first place Broncos. At number four play, Wilson comes down the lane through traffic, count it, and one, the senior gets a win in his final battle of the Bronx appearance. At number three, the 6'2 freshman Aaron Walker throws it down on the 6'8 Monmouth defender. At number two, Jaspers down two to Maris, with the clock winding down, Papuano gives it to Turner, who gives it to Waterman, who hits the three to put Mass Jaspers up one. Our top play, Zane Waterman, with a ferocious dunk, hoop and the hom, Waterman completed the three-point play. There you have it, the Jaspers' top seven plays of the season. That's it for today's edition of Fast Break. Thank you for joining us. Have a great day, Jasper Nation.